Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. For all positive rational numbers q, there are a unique pair of positive integers a and b, such that q is equal to a over b, and the greatest common divisor of a and b is equal to 1. So, we're essentially trying to prove that every positive rational number has exactly one simplest form. For example, if we take q to be the positive rational number 4 eighths, well, we know that 4 eighths can be simplified down to 1 half. And we say that 1 half cannot be simplified any further. What we're essentially saying here is that if we take a to be 1 and b to be 2, well then, we know that 4 eighths is equal to 1 over 2 and the greatest common divisor of 1 and 2 is equal to 1. In fact, 1 and 2 are the only pair of positive integers which will satisfy those two conditions. And that's essentially the way that this theorem works. Now, in proving this theorem, we are going to use some facts regarding greatest common divisor. Let's just remind ourselves that the greatest common divisor of a and b is the largest integer which is a divisor of both a and b. Now, a property of the greatest common divisor is as follows. And here's a fact regarding greatest common divisors, which follows from this one. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. To start off the proof, since we're trying to prove a state about all positive rational numbers, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive rational number. Call it q. From here, the whole goal is to show that there is a unique pair of positive integers a and b, such that this is true and this is true. And we're going to break this proof up into two portions, existence and uniqueness. In the existence portion, we're trying to prove that there exists a pair of positive integers that satisfy these two conditions. In the uniqueness portion, we're trying to prove that that pair of positive integers that we found is the only pair of positive integers that satisfy these two conditions. So let's start with existence. Now, since q is a positive rational number, well, by definition of the positive rational numbers, this means that there exist positive integers u and v, such that q is equal to u over v. Now, intuitively, we want to divide the numerator and denominator by the greatest common divisor of u and v, because that would put the fraction in simplest form. So let's first define the greatest common divisor of u and v by the letter g. Now, we aren't exactly going to divide both the numerator and denominator by g, but instead, since g is the greatest common divisor of u and v, surely g is a divisor of both u and v. So, since g is a divisor of u, this means that there is some integer a such that u is equal to g times a. Since g is a divisor of v, this means there is some integer b such that b is equal to g times a b. In fact, a and b are positive. Because u and g are positive, v and g are positive. And now, let's take q equals u over v and substitute u for g times a, substitute v for g times b. And now we see that the g's cancel out. So at this point, we're essentially dividing both the numerator and denominator by g. So q is equal to a over b. And so, supposedly, this would put our fraction in simplest form. So, what's the whole goal of the existence portion? The whole goal is to find a pair of positive integers which satisfy these two conditions. Well, our claim is that the pair of positive integers a and b that we have in our proof will satisfy these two conditions. Well, we already know that q is equal to a over b. That's what we have here. So, all that's left to show is that the greatest common divisor of a and b is equal to 1. 
And to show that, let's first note, since G is the greatest common divisor of U and V, we can apply fact number one. We know that G is the smallest positive integer of the form US plus VT. So there must exist integers S and T such that G is equal to US plus VT. And now let's substitute U for GA and V with GB. And then notice we can divide G on both sides and we get AS plus BT is equal to one. And then by our second fact, since AS plus BT is equal to one, it follows that the greatest common divisor of A and B is equal to one. So we have shown that the second condition is satisfied. So this proves existence. Now let's prove uniqueness. In the uniqueness portion, we're trying to prove that the pair of positive integers A and B that we found, which satisfy these two conditions, are the only pair of positive integers which satisfy these two conditions. And so to prove that, let's suppose we have another pair of positive integers which satisfy these two conditions. And we'll suppose that pair is C and D. So we have given ourselves another pair of positive integers which satisfy these two conditions. The whole goal of uniqueness is to prove that these two pairs are precisely the same. So really, we want to prove that A is equal to C and B is equal to D. So to start out, since Q is equal to A over B and Q is equal to C over D, it follows that A over B is equal to C over D. And from here, we can multiply B on both sides, and we can multiply D on both sides. We get AD equals BC. Also, since the greatest common divisor of C and D is equal to 1, by fact number 2, there must exist integers S and T such that CS plus DT is equal to 1. But we already have integers S and T used in our proof, so let's instead call those integers J and K. So there are integers j and k such that cj plus dk is equal to 1. Okay, now remember, the whole goal was to show that a is equal to c and b is equal to d. Let's first show that a is equal to c. And to show that a is equal to c, we are going to show that a is a divisor of c and c is a divisor of a. Those two facts together imply that A is equal to C. So to show that those two things are true, let's first take this equation and multiply C on both sides. If we do that, we get that C is equal to CAS plus CBT. But then we know that BC is equal to AD. So we can factor out an A and now we see that C is equal to A times integer. Therefore, A is a divisor of C. In a similar way, let's take this equation and multiply A on both sides. If we do that, we get A is equal to ACJ plus ADK. And then we know that AD is equal to BC. And then we can factor out a C so now we see that A is equal to C times integer. Therefore, C is a divisor of A. So since A is a divisor of C and C is a divisor of A, those two facts together imply that A is equal to C. So we have shown that A is equal to C. Now let's show that B is equal to D. And to show that B is equal to D, we're going to show that B is a divisor of D and D is a divisor of B. And so to show that, let's first take this equation, multiply D on both sides. If we do that, we get D equals DAS plus DBT. But then notice AD is equal to BC. Then we can factor out B. 
So now we see that D is equal to B times integer. So B is a divisor of D. In a similar way, let's take this equation and multiply B on both sides. If we do that, we get B equals BCJ plus BDK. And then let's notice BC is equal to AD. And then we can factor out a D. And now we see that B is equal to D times an integer, so D is a divisor of B. And now, since B is a divisor of D and D is a divisor of B, these two facts together imply that B is equal to D. And so we have shown that A is equal to C and B is equal to D, which tells us that these two pairs of positive integers are precisely the same. So this completes the uniqueness portion. And so with existence and uniqueness together, we have proven that there exists a unique pair of positive integers which satisfy these two conditions. And so we have proven the theorem. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.